Ethers suck. Actually, they're not that bad. They just kind of suck because there's three different ways to name them. And, well, having three different na ways to name something kind of sucks. Okay, so let's look at a couple ways to name them. Or actually, we're going to look at all three. Alright, so this is the first way to name them. Um, it's the easiest. So let's get an ether. Okay, so here's our ether. Uh, how we name it is we uh, look at what's on this side, what's on this side, and identify what they are. So on this side, this is an ethyl group. On this side, this is a T-butyl group. So how do we name this? I spelled this wrong. Uh-oh. E-T-H-Y-L. Okay. So, this is really easy to name. E-T-H-Y-L. Ethyl. T-butyl. Ether. That's all there is. Um, okay. Let's draw another one, just for clarification. Let's draw a couple. I like ethers. Or naming them this way, at least. Okay, so, what is this? So again, identify what's on this side, and what's on this side. So, this is an isopropyl. On this side, we also have an iso... No, where'd it go? So we have an isopropyl on both sides. So, we can call this isopropyl, isopropyl ether, but that sounds kind of stupid, so we call it diisopropyl ether, because it's easier. And that's as hard as naming ethers get. Let's name this one using the same method. Okay, so same thing. What's in this circle and what's in this circle? So, of course, you've memorized these. This is your phenyl group. This is your benzyl group. So this is called phenyl benzyl ether. Nothing too hard at all. Okay, so <coughs> that's one way. Um, second way, but you use the first way most of the time. Um, the second way, you would use it if you have more than one occurring as substituents. So, let's say you have something like this. Okay, so now you have two ethers, uh, and you can't really name them the same way as you did the last one. So, uh, naming it like this is, can be a little bit trickier. First of all, you're going to want to identify what this is called and what this is called, and then simply just name them off of whatever this is. So, numbering this, we have one, two, three, or sorry, that was dumb of me. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is going to be a cyclohexane. Um, and then there's going to be these two things hanging off of it. So we're going to call this a methyl, because this is a methyl group, because there's just one carbon here. So we're going to call this a methoxy. Similarly, this is an 
S oxy. So we call this 1 ethoxy 2 methoxy cyclohexane. Very similar to that. Okay. Um, another way, another situation in which you can use this is going to be one where you have a situation. Ah, where my colors go. Okay. So block that off. What if you have something that looks like this? Then you have your that ah, crap. Okay, so we're going to have this. So you know that with um without this oxygen, this would just be your carboxylic acid, just normal. So, what you can do here is name this, and then name your carboxylic acid, and then you can name this as a methoxy group, which you can see this is a methoxy again. So first, let's name how many carbons we have in here. So we have one, two, three, four carbons. Of course, you're going to start numbering from the carbonyl. So Okay, so let's go four carbons. So it's going to be a butanoic acid. Um, and then you have a methoxy hanging off of it. Okay, and you see the methoxy is off of the fourth carbon because you start numbering from your carbonyl. So it's going to be four methoxy butanoic acid. Okay. So that's the second way. Um, the third way now. Okay, so now we're going to do the third way. Um, you use it in situations uh, where it's, you know, I'm going to clear the screen first, which would probably be a good idea. Hmm. All right, so third way, let's say you have a molecule that looks like this. Okay, so what are you going to call this? You know, I have really no idea. Okay. So, um, again, we're going to s we're going to treat this first as if there is no oxygen in here. So we're going to pretend this oxygen is a carbon. Okay. So number our carbon chain. But when we're numbering it, we're pretending that our oxygen is really a carbon. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, ten's enough. Okay. So, oh wait, I didn't delete it. Oh well. Okay, we have eleven now. Cool. Okay, so there's our eleven carbon chain. You know, eleven is going to be un deck ain. However, as you see that these aren't. Um, this isn't an alkane, this is an alkene. So we're going to call it undecene. However, you see that there's two double bonds, so it's going to be undecadiene. Um, and as you see, the double bonds are at one and trans eight. Uh, if you don't know how to name these, there's an earlier video on how to name alkenes. All right, so now this is named. We have a methyl group hanging off of the fourth carbon. So we're going to go four 
methyl, one trans eight octadiene. Okay, so that's what what this would be called if this oxygen here weren't a carbon, or, or were a carbon and not an oxygen. So now, instead of uh, naming everything, so instead of naming this and then naming this and then taking it onto the middle, you can name this as naming it like it was a carbon, and then at the end going, no, wait, six was oxa. Um, which just acknowledges that the six supposed carbon is actually an oxygen. Okay, I think that's good for the ethers. Next, I will do either amines or esters. I haven't decided yet.